Good afternoon, folks. I'm Dave Thompson. I'm the Education Director here at the Academy of Cleaning Excellence. If you're striving to be progressive, looking for knowledge of all things that are positive and advancing health and best practices, then you're watching the right show today. Earlier this month, I had the pleasure to instruct my first ISSA class, and that was held at our newest Academy Regional Campus. Now, that was in Atlanta, and my guest today is Phil Constantino. Uh, he is the president of Atlanta MRO Supply, and he was the host of that event at the Atlanta Motor Speedway, one great way to start the whole project. So, come on back after the short message, and well, you know what? Hey, we're gonna change things a little bit today, so I'm just gonna get right into it. You know, there's three words that I focus on each and every Friday afternoon. Those three words, healthy, positive, and proactive. Now, before we really get into the message with Phil, you know, we do our chat every week. Uh, if you've got a message that you wanna put in or a question, it's on that right-hand side on the YouTube channel there. So I want you to welcome Phil with Atlanta MRO Supply. Phil, you there? Hey, Dave, I'm doing fine, how are you? Well, hell, I'll tell you what, this is a whole lot different than the last time we were together. Uh, we were running around the track and, and enjoying a lot of fast stuff. Well, about 180 miles an hour, if I, recount, if I remember. Uh, I think she may have drove you around the track a little faster than me then. <laughs> I paid the bill. Uh, yeah, well, that's right. You did pay the bill. The last time I saw you, we were at that track, and that was one great way to start off our relationship. I don't know that we can actually go any faster than that. Well, the whole theme of that day was to rev up your cleaning team, try to figure out ways how people are going to be able to improve their productivity and get a better cleaning job uh, out of the crew that they have. And people that attended had a great time and really enjoyed having you come up and lead the discussion for the day. It was a, it was a successful event. I guarantee you what, that sure did rev things up. That was, that was for sure. Uh, I think you've kind of set the bar high for uh, the next campus or the other campuses that come on board now. Well, that's our goal. And, and I got to tell you, we're really thrilled to be associated uh, with the Academy. You know, I've been in this industry for 50 years, um, built a reputation on being the education distributor, whether it was in Michigan or here in Atlanta. And, and we have a library of all kinds of information, educational materials. Of course, we have the ISSA and their whole vast educational uh, information to us, but bringing it all together in a concise, uh, organized way is, is really good. And I think you're to be commended on the job you've done at putting the Academy together. Well, thanks a lot. I know that you've been in the business for a long time. I, I, I don't want to challenge because I think you may have just a few years on me on that part, but you know, I think we both recognize that you know, the cleaning industry isn't all about products and machines. Education is extremely important, and that's why we've got the Academy. Um, you worked for several others before, and you just kind of started your own deal here not too long ago. That's correct. Uh, just broke the 50-year mark of being in the industry, and for most of that, we had our own family business. It was called Allen Aids up in Michigan. Okay. Um, had a great time up there ended up selling the business in the mid 90s did some other things for a while came to atlanta in 2000 worked for a company down here and uh, about three years ago decided to it was time to do my own thing and we opened up atlanta mro supply and we're doing really well uh, like most startup businesses you know we didn't have the time and the money to focus on the education part we had to develop customers get our lines lined up, make sure we were uh, designed for success. But all that time during all three years, it's been a battle cry of our customers. We need education, we need more education. So oh, and, and I that's wanted why, to gear up quickly and now we're doing it with you. And that's why we joined up. So we have the SITS uh, verified program. And for you that may not have known this, SITS is from ISSA, is an acronym for Cleaning Industry Training Standard. And so what we utilize here at the Academy are three different uh, courses that are SITS verified. And uh, one of those is what we came up there and taught earlier this month, and we are gonna be doing some more. We're gonna tell you about that later, but 
all of the campuses that we're setting up, they must achieve, first of all, the cleaning industry training standard, cleaning 101. That's what you have. Matter of fact, I, I think I see your certificate in the background there. Right there. <laughs> yeah, huh. so that yeah, means- probably, you, probably displayed. That means you've earned your first step. We'll get you to the rest of them later, but this is what we did at the racetrack. We had an all day class for that. And I know that you mentioned, and as well as I did, you know, customers need education, but I think our industry has kind of tried to say training and education and use the same term for both, and they're not. No, no. Uh, we do a lot of uh, hurry up training when we hire new people, but we don't always give them the background and the education, the knowledge that they need about why we clean and how we clean. So I think formalizing the program the way ISSA has and the way you've brought it to market uh, is very going to be very helpful. I know whenever I, I sent you my list of needs for my presentation here earlier in the month, I sent Phil this uh, picture of three items, and it was a, a jar of peanut butter, uh, some jelly, and a mix. And he sent me back a message, what are we doing growing to the grocery store? But uh, kind of tell the audience what that did. Oh, it was fun. Um, if you haven't seen uh, Dave do his uh, routine, uh, he basically tries to get someone out of the audience to describe to him how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And like you might imagine, it has a lot of comedy to it. And uh, But it drives a point home that we have to do a better job of explaining what we need done and how to do it. And so that's the difference between education and training. You know, we do on-the-job training and all that does is, as I always say, just trains in the shortcuts. And we, so we have a shortcut in that whole skit. You know, this is what you and I talked about before. Manufacturers really kind of do that for us. Not that it's all bad, but until now, that's kind of the only thing that our end users had available. Well, manufacturers are, uh, have been a source for our industry for you know, as long as I can remember uh, for training, but it's usually product specific because let's face it, they're in the business to sell product. Sure. What ISSA has done and, and what you're doing is bringing the generic training that people need to be successful and professional in the cleaning world and to understand clearly that we're cleaning for health, not just cleaning for appearance. I think that's, that's definitely the, uh, the new battle cry of our industry in the last decade or so. Uh, whether it's under the auspices of green cleaning or uh, the built environment uh, sanitation, it, it, it's, we got to do, we're, 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 as you say, saving the world. And, and I think we're a very important part of that, that mix. Well, absolutely. I think the clients understand now, not like you and I, when we were coming into this industry, the, the education we had was not existent. All we had was training. And so we've developed our own education over the years of experience. And now what we're trying to do is bring that to the, the new generations that are coming up and even some of the other ones that are trying to update what they know. And I think the clients want the whole story now. They don't want just uh, just the product anymore. Well, that's, that's for sure. It, and it's just been in the last maybe 10 years, maybe 20, that the industry has really grown up utilize, utilizing technology, some of the new ways of cleaning the traditional how to maintain floors, carpets, restrooms, etc. Those those are core nece necessary parts of the cleaning task. But how to do it, and how to do it safely, and how to leave a better result, uh, it's just altogether different today. And even people that have been doing cleaning for years need training. Well, and I think the thing is, you said a key word there, Al or uh, Phil, is that you know this isn't about anything but results. If we're not getting the results, and you know that we have our basic fundamentals, <coughs> excuse me, you know, that you talked about, but you know, the, there, there's a number of areas where people just don't know, and we in our industry, unfortunately, have a revolving door of employment. So there's ongoing education that everybody needs. Oh, that's that's definitely a big part of our job. Um, we're rolling out new product today, microfiber, new equipment, hands-free restroom sanitation. 
And believe it or not, people sometimes people meet that with resistance and it takes time to get them to see the benefits, feel the benefits that they're going to achieve. Let's face it, everybody cares about what's in it for me. And, and eventually they see the new ways are actually much better and it, it makes cleaning faster and better for them, gives a better result. And everybody that's in the cleaning industry wants to have that wow moment that they've actually done something really nice to achieve a great level of cleanliness. So what about costs? What about costs? It costs less. You know, uh, you and I were talking when we were together last, uh, back in the days in the 70s, I can remember as a contract cleaner uh, that what it would cost about per square foot to maintain a building, right. labor, materials. And it hasn't changed all that much in like 40 years. Uh, the increased productivity of the of the actual cleaning people, use of equipment, uh, surfaces that have changed, the whole level of cleaning in the United States has, has vastly improved over the last 40 years. And so it's not as tough a job to, to maintain a high standard of cleaning as it used to be. We're not cleaning up old stuff. We're just cleaning up today's stuff. Well, and I think what you and I have both realized as we work with clients out in the field is that we're taking care of larger expanses of surface than we ever have. Well, our business, for example, uh, we're the Hilliard dealer in Atlanta. and Hilliard has a great reputation for gym floors. And we do an awful lot with commercial wood floors, restroom sanitation, uh, health care. We're into more sectors of business than I've ever been in in the 50 years. Right. So it, it's it, whether it's a large great big uh, event center, uh, could be a small restaurant. Everybody has the same challenges of sanitation. Well, and I think that's here at the academy that I realize is, you know, we've got the basic core information, uh, education classes that people want, but there's always somebody coming. I mean, as I was walking to get here on the show right now, a guy walks up, says, I've got this problem. Here's the, the floor. And I said, I need to know what type of floor. and you know, we've got stuff like luxury vinyl tile that we didn't have 20 years ago. There's a whole new way to take care of it now. And if we don't educate and we don't have those resources for education of why we need to ask questions before you just grab a piece of machine and a product and go try to fix it. We, we run into that all the time with the LVT. And if the people haven't been given the right instruction, they go in and do a strip and wax, if you even use that term anymore. And no. And they ruin the floor. And the next thing you know, people have invested all this money into a floor that doesn't require that kind of care. And they ruin the floor and, and, and it's, it's, it's a tragedy. So yeah, you need, you need to educate. And, and the new services really make it nice for the cleaning people because it requires far less in product, chemicals, and time. So, you know, I've, you, you and I have both been doing this for a long time. And we've already established that. But in recent years is when I've been moving to actually make education an item that we sell just the same as we sell a case of toilet paper, a floor machine, or anything else. And uh, you know, you're joining in the academy, and I think you have some of the same philosophy. It's always been that way in any business I've been involved with. Um, it, it, it's probably the most valuable part of what we have to sell not to downgrade the products, but if you don't have the know-how, if you don't have the, an understanding of how to use the products and to create a healthy environment. We're, we're not talking about cleaning anymore to make the place look better. Uh, our appearance quotient is, is up there now in this, in this United States. Everywhere I go, uh, you know, first impression generally is good. Floors are maintained nice. Uh, we haven't solved uh, the couple of the, the critters we have left to do. But cleaning for health is absolutely the number one thing that we're training on now. Well, right. We do not clean for appearance. And I, I think in class, I always state this. I hate the word clean because you can't define clean. Uh, right. it, it's a perception issue. But I can define and I can show results of health. We'll talk about that in a minute, but whenever you've got these schools and these healthcare facilities, basically any public facility, it's, it's whether that facility, that environment is healthy or not. Where, where people gather, 
schools, hospitals, event centers, churches, people gather, you run the risk of, uh, you know, cross contamination of whatever they're doing. You were just telling me about your plane ride and how you okay. can't hardly get in a plane anymore without catching a cold. So the environment that we're living in uh, is, is just a, an incubator of uh, different types of bacteria, diseases. And so cleaning for health has to be our real purpose for being in this business. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, the thing is, is I did, I did fly up to Atlanta, come in and did the class. I was in good health when I got there. When I got back, I, I had tried my whole trip to minimize my hand contact on all surfaces. I took as many precautions as I could. Six days later, I've got a two-week flu. And, you know, the thing about it is I had to grab my piece of luggage. I don't know how many hands that that piece of luggage touched. But I don't know where I got it. It could have been just through what I breathed in the airplane. But that's what you're talking about. These are the environments we live in, and that's our personal exposures now. The only thing good about that is that you got it on the way back to Florida and not when you were on your way up here to see me. <laughs> okay, well, I'm driving up there next time, so I don't have that problem. But That'll that's the great. whole thing. We, we understand and we have choices in our environment, but our, our responsibility is to try to make... Um, these environments as, as healthy as we can. You know what, I think you and I talked a little bit about this, but fitness centers, I mean, we've got MRSA that's just rampant in some fitness centers. Well, again, it's people are gathering, but now they're gathering and they're all touching the same surfaces on purpose. So uh, uh, yeah, there, there's, there's an endless list of ways that people in the cleaning industry can be of help to all businesses. Um, and and that's that's what we're trying to do. I, I think I've talked to you before about, uh, you know, the ATP meter and the way you test and, and find out. You were talking a minute ago about you can't really judge clean, but you can judge, you know, uh, if it's sanitary and healthy. Right. Uh, you know, people that don't have these devices, that don't, don't understand the whole purpose of why we're in business, uh, miss the mark, I think. It was just about how many gallons can I sell? I don't think they're doing the public service that our industry should be doing. Well, and there, you know, and I just had an infection prevention class earlier this week, and you know, I brought out the ATP meter, and what I explained there is that this shows that our process is effective. It doesn't show what it kills. It doesn't show what kind of bacteria we're removing from a surface, but it shows the effectiveness of our processes, and that's what education is. You know, restrooms cause 50% of the complaints, but they only are about 5% of the total area. But why is that? Because we're not, we're not doing these testings. Well, restrooms is the, the last frontier as far as I'm concerned. We, we here at Atlanta MRO Supply, that's, that's our number one. Matter of fact, the employees here giggle at me sometimes because I really, I really make a big thing about restroom sanitation as the, the thing we have to tackle first and foremost in any facility because they uh that's not been solved and whether it's odor control or sanitation disinfecting uh regularly scheduled checking you know all people want that that i ever that i talk to they want a positive restroom experience i just want to go into a room i don't want to be offended when i go in i'd like the facilities to be clean i'd like to have hand soap towel <laughs> you know what i need to do my business and move on and uh, we're actually starting a campaign now. We're going to start monitoring and measuring the satisfaction of people in restrooms. Stay tuned. We'll probably be back together on that soon. Cool. Hey, did you know that last October that there was a new law regarding baby changing tables? No. Well, see, that's why the Academy and you are going to be working together, because last October there's a new law for federal buildings that there has to be a baby changing table in both gender uh, restrooms. And I saw somebody that put out just recently a protocol on how to clean those because there wasn't one. And, and, and the thing is, is that they actually put into that protocol that you could put the disinfectant on baby changing table and let it air dry. I got to tell you, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. You have to rinse that disinfectant off. That is a registered pesticide. You can't leave that on that surface for that baby to come in contact. But yet, this is what we're talking about with professional development education from the academy. Must be why we recently had all of our customers ask us for pricing 
for a whole bunch of baby changing tables. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll look into that. Thanks for the heads up. Hey, I'm glad I could be helped today. I'm going to be up there with Phil and his group uh, in August. Uh, we have uh, August the 7th through the 10th. We will be instructing the master's class. Um, we have uh, eight ISSA certifications that people can earn during that week. Phil's going to be putting out his links for you to come and join us there. Um, Phil, I guess, you know, we've had our good 20 minutes of time. Uh, anything that you want to leave us with? Just uh, really appreciate having you as part of our team here, Dave. Look forward to all the things we're going to work on together and uh, hopefully get over your cold before you come back to, back up in August. Oh, I will. I can guarantee you that I'll be over by then. Okay, man. I look forward to it. Um, now, if you have been watching us, uh, we've kind of changed things up a little bit today. We're launching the new Academy of Cleaning Excellence website. If you go to academyofcleaning.com, you will find that. Now, I will tell you, when you go there, the website's not completely finished, so don't go getting critical on us. It's under construction, but we're moving forward. And uh, Phil and his location is definitely on there. So if you want to sign up for a class uh, in the Atlanta area, please go there and search that out. You can also go to my new website um, and find the classes by state and city now. So, you know, as the academy is growing, we're trying to grow with it. You're going to find a lot of changes in the coming months. So even our logo is changing. We've got a new logo we're working on. We've got a new Facebook page uh, for the academy. Uh, we're putting up things on there, so go and like us there. Phil, come on over and put some postings on there. We'd like to have you do that, too. Anyway, like and share all of those pages. Uh, you know, next Friday, I'm going to be right back here talking with you. Uh, we don't have a, a scheduled guest yet, uh, with it being the 4th of July and everything. We've had a few glitches, but you know what? I might have to call Phil and have him come on to the show again and help me out if I have to. Anyway, folks, until next Friday afternoon at 1 p.m., live from Orlando, I'm Dave Thompson. Keep changing your future. Keep those changes healthy, positive, and proactive. And remember my mantra, I am a janitor, and I save lives. Thanks for watching, and thanks for